Welcome back to Let's Play Splinter Cell. I'm Burning Dog Face, and last time we... Oh, it's not that obvious anymore. That's right. Last time we killed a corrupt police officer. There he is. Chased off the guy who uh, was waiting to make a complaint and probably never would have. And we knocked the fuck out of a uh, some poor asshole they hired to work in the morgue. This time we're going to start things off with a shout-out to Justin Jones, who says, I seem to remember that this is one of the first games to make use of mini-games for opening locks and such. I also seem to remember that these little mini-games got way out of control for most games soon after. In my opinion, Oblivion was one of the worst offenders of some nonsense mini-game used to try and persuade someone to do something. When it comes to role-playing games, I'm very old-school, i.e. dialogue trees and skill checks. For games like Splinter Cell, I think that mini-games add an interesting mechanic. Also, Data Stick? Is that what we used to call thumb drives? Yeah, I do believe I've heard that one. And shout-out to Silent Assassin 47 who's left a few comments now just expressing gratitude that the series is happening. I guess I'm not really that surprised that someone whose uh, username and icon are both Agent 47 is into stealth games. <laughs> oh, speaking of which, uh, Justin Jones also says, Stealth sections in games always made me nervous, even in games that the stealth mechanics were rather primitive. Playing through an entire game that is one massive stealth section? I'm glad I'm watching you do it, BDF, rather than me attempting it. And yes, watching was the word he used. You had best believe I would not use that word. Can I close this door? No. If, uh, he had not. What? Oh, the can I dropped to get the guy out of his chair. Oh, this doesn't lead anywhere. Oh, I see, there is a door here. Sick. A sliding door. Huh. I couldn't put the thing underneath it. I was worried that guy would hear that. F5! Let's take a look around. Oh, that's right. That's why there's a light meter in the corner. Yes, I just remembered that from well, earlier today, actually. I just go back out to the corner again before I turn it back on. Just wanted to get a feeling for the lighting in the room. I think the trick will be... Wait. I don't know if there's anyone on that side of the room. I was going to say, I think the trick will be just walking past these guys, because they're busy at work. Hey, I should probably be breathing in real life. There's got to be the place. This is a security room, all right. Oh, I can't ask you anything. Jeez, the shadow, the goggles hiding his eyes, and the black and white really make this ominous. That's better. He has a satchel. Yoink. Data stick recovered. No data. Well, nothing, no details listed. From Sergeant Ramaz Lortke Panizzi to Officer Gizo Giorgio Biani. Thanks, Windows uh, Defender Summary. <laughs> Windows Defender Antivirus did not find any viruses the last four times it scanned. Oh, jeez. Embarrassing! <clears throat> uh, Officer Gizo Gior Giorgio ba Biani. It's a very Italian name. Sent uh, October 14th, 2004, 11.58. Subject, re Givi. Gizo, I don't trust Cavazzi. Uh, Cavazzi. I don't care who he's related to. I don't want him within throwing distance of our horse. What? Our Lord Panizzi. Okay. What does 
it actually say? No, it's just a bunch of ones and it's a bunch of digits. I thought it was all ones and zeros, but no, there's some other things in there. And the word ready at the bottom. And again, ready and the word important on that pile of documents are uh, English. Great work, Fisher. We're scanning the videotapes now. There. That's our guy. We got him red-handed. Can you run his face through Echelon? Already on it. Hey, check it out. A license plate. 84KP214. Fantastic. Fisher, we got what we need. Rendezvous with Wilkes, your work here is done. We'll get back to you once we've sifted this intel. They capitalized the word intel, which I thought was funny. You know, because it's not actually an acronym, it's just short for intelligence. Meet Junior Wilkes in front of the police precinct for extraction. Is that Vernon Wilkes Jr.? Yeah. Okay. They don't give you the option to set off the alarms yourself, so... Well, these guys don't seem to have noticed. front of the police precinct. Well, I think the front door was just downstairs, so I logically I should just go down there. So I'm going to save the game and do a bunch of stupid shit. You can't stop me! Oh! I actually got data from that computer. Uh, from Sergeant... Ram it's from Ramaz to Gizo, uh, sent on the 15th, resisting arrest. Uh, Gizo, I need you to stop by and pick up the concierge at the Hotel Begarubi for questioning. Make up whatever charges you see fit, something he wouldn't be inclined to talk about. Once you get him back to the station, have him resist arrest and break something painful. It's a favor for a very influential friend. Wait. Do it well and we'll both be a little richer for it. And that e email I found earlier about someone complaining about the concierge. Oh no. Do it well and we'll both be a little richer for it. Oh dear. Well, now that there's actually information here. What if I grab this guy? Does the other guy react? He does not. Here you go, big guy. And now I'm going to knock out your friend, too. And you can all hang out in the security office, which I'm going to move a desk in front of. Just FYI. Excuse me, sir. Do you have any Grey Poupon? There isn't even an option to interrogate them if nothing can happen. God, I love that view where it's just the lights and you can't see his face at all. Can I even open the door like this? No. So I'll just go ahead and do this. Oh. here. Is that the only computer I can interact with here? Oh, yeah. I guess it is. Fair enough. Okay, back out into the main room. We're going to use all those computers and check all those doors. Let's take a look here. What about this guy's uh, workspace? Nope! 
How about this one? Nothing. This one has fish on it. Maybe they have to have a screensaver going before you can get any information. Yeah, that's the one I just checked, I think. Uh, yeah. Can't interact with that, oddly. Uh, nope, nothing over here. It's not a computer at all. It's just a pile of books. And boxes and stuff. Well, I got one interesting email out of it. What's this door do? There's another computer in there. Neat. This must be an important uh, person's office. Let me rephrase that, a more important person's office. Aha! I can't remember when they stopped using data stick. I think, like, thumb drive became, like, the universal one. I also remember memory stick being a thing. From Officer Bezo Chiashvili to Sergeant Ramaz Lorkt Kipenidzi. Sent October 15th, 2004. 2353. Subject. Three in traction. Lord Kipenidzi, sir. I just returned from the hospital where about two and three quarters men remain in critical condition. The beat cop taking statements from the doctors had a picture-perfect description of the men's attackers. Your friend Grinko and some ogre named Nikolai. You may want to put in a call to the commissioner over at the Eastern Precinct if you want to keep your friends from drawing more attention than they need right now. Beso. No, it's, uh, it's Kavadze that they didn't trust. Interesting. Go for it, says this lozenge wrapper. Is that a... No, there's no door there. Sure. Oh, uh, what are those ones? At least one of these was locked. Oh, fuck! There's a guy strapped to a chair in there! It's an interrogation room, that's why it's locked. Uh, we'll check the other side first, because there might be a cop in there. Oh, I will note that that guy seemed to be using the same model as, uh... Those guys I knocked out way the fuck earlier and complimented their jackets. Come on! There we go. Thank God for carpet. Hey! 5.7 millimeter... Uh, 5.72 millimeter ammo. What the hell is that? Well, I'll take the ammo, but... You know what? Let me... Give me a second. I'm gonna look up the flag of Georgia to see if that's what it looks like. No, that is definitely not the flag of Georgia. The flag of Georgia looks more like something the Knights Templars would have. It's white with a red cross in the middle and four red crosses in the quadrants. Huh. This is just purple in three out of four quadrants, and the last one up in the upper left is black on the top and white on the bottom. Oh, maybe it's like the flag of, uh, like the, the, the terrorist movement or something. Hmm. Nothing. Right. Up. Down. No, 
Oh, is he dead? That's a shame. I can't interact with him in any way. Can't take the fire extinguisher and throw that or anything. Lame. Well, if he's dead, I guess they're not recording me, so I don't have to go shoot that camera. Man, imagine if I tried to get the drop on them by doing that. And it turns out I was just turning the lights on. See, that's not in English. Why is everything else in English? I have no idea what that says, but since it's red letters inside of a little metal box, I'm going to assume it says exit this way. That's a bad sound. A van just pulled out in front of the police station from through this uh, door. Oh, there's that flag again. Maybe, uh, yeah, maybe Naval, uh... Well, maybe whatever the bad guy's name is changed the flag of Georgia to something more appropriate to his group. I'm gonna go ahead and put the gun in my hand. In fact, let me just make sure it's loaded. Yep. Oh, that's probably my pickup, isn't it? Let's make sure there's no goodies around the corners. Goodies, Easter eggs, whatever. Oh, there's a guy there. Let's just, let's just do this. Mission complete! Nice. Tbilisi Police Precinct, Tbilisi, Georgia, October 16th, 2004, 22, 29 hours. The bodies of Agents Blaustein and Madison were located in the morgue of, Tbil of a Tbilisi Police Precinct. Before being sent to Georgia, the agents had been outfitted with subdermal tracking implants. These implants were removed from their corpses and taken to the Georgian Ministry of Defense by a man named Vyacheslav Grinko, Grinko who we now know is a leg breaker. Great. Love that. Hmm. Not sure how I feel about that. Because he's going to have all the ability to kick my ass, and I'm probably going to have to sneak around. Shout out to Justin Jones, who says, You'd be amazed at the things your ears can tell you if you stop and pay attention. Try it. Turn off all your light sources and just listen for a bit. Ah, uh, Georgia, the, birth, the birthplace of one Joseph Stalin, one of history's most infamous monsters, right up there with Hitler, Mao, and Pol Pot. I think the, in the obstacle course would have been more interesting if they had let Tommy the Xenomorph loose, you know, to give Sam a bit more of a challenge. Oh, God. Yes, that would have made things a lot more interesting. Tommy being the, uh, the hunter from, uh, Alien Isolation. Mark a steady rise in Georgia's economy. Once central to the former Soviet Union's development and manufacture of weapons, Georgia has recently resurfaced as a potential player in the world military industry, with active contracts in Russia, Turkey, Germany, and even... has stated the need, especially in these times, for a reliable source of oil in the Middle East. Commerce Secretary Moore, on a visit to Azerbaijan this morning, noted the tiny nation's enormous potential for oil, calling on American investors to provide the necessary funds for tapping the reserves. In many ways, a leader from a bygone era. His beliefs are very firmly founded in Georgian orthodoxy. His political standings more in line with the early 20th century. Would you fault him, then, as a politician? No, no, not at all. Kumbe Nikolaitz is all politician. He's done wonders for the Georgian economy. A brilliant tactician. It's more a question of ethics. And ethically speaking? Well... This episode ran on longer than I intended it to, so I'm going to cut it off right here. I'm Burning Dog Face, and I'll see you on the next episode of Let's Play Splinter Cell. Till then, have yourselves a great day, Burning Dog fans. Later!